माय नेम इज जावेद एंड आई एम अ स्टूडेंट आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क एन क्वेश्चन एट वन प्लेस द होली कुरान स्टेट्स दैट मैन इज क्रिएटेड फ्रॉम स्पम विच इज इन कंसिडर्ड विद मॉडर्न साइंस बट एट अनदर प्लेस इट ऑल्सो स्टेट दैट मैन इज मेड फ्रॉम डस्ट now isn't the holy quran contradicting itself or is it consistent with modern science the brother called the question that one place the holy quran says that human beings have been created from sperm which consists of modern science the other place human being is created from dust can you prove it scientifically it's created from dust and isn't there contradiction one place sperm one place it says dust the holy quran does say as i mentioned in my talk in surah qiyamah chapter 75 verse number 37 to 39 it says that human beings have been created from sperm which have been proved by science the holy quran also says in surah hajj chapter 22 verse number 5 that we have created the human beings from a quintessence of dust today science tells us that all the elements that are there in the human body they are present in lesser or greater quantity in the soil in the earth so the statement that human being have been created from earth is scientifically proven that whatever components are there in the human body the constituent the elements they are present in the earth in the soil in lesser or greater proportion the second part of the question is there a contradiction one place the quran says man is created from sperm one says from dust is it in contradiction see a contradiction is two statements which are conflicting with each other which cannot take place simultaneously the quran does not only say man has been created from sperm and the other place from dust it also says in surah furqan chapter 25 verse 54 that man has been created from water so you will tell me that three contradictions See, science has proven that man has been created from dust as well as from sperm as well as from water. If I tell you, in one statement, that to make a cup of tea, I require water. In the second statement, I say, to make a cup of tea, I require tea leaves or tea powder. It's not a contradiction. I require both. If I want to make sweet tea, I add sugar to it. If I want to make pani kam tea, I add less water and more milk. If I want to make Sulaimani tea, I add only water. So there is no contradiction when the Quran says human being is created from sperm and dust and water. It is actually contradistinction. What is the meaning of contradistinction? Contradistinction means speaking two or more things about a subject. which are not conflicting with each other for example if i say that this man is honest he is kind and loving it is contradistinction but if i say this man is always a liar and a truthful person then it's contradiction because both are opposing if it's not opposing it's called as contradistinction A next question from the ladies section Assalamu alaikum brother my name is Farida Ansari i am a laboratory technician Quran says Allah is the creator of the human being does science agree with it The sister posed a question that the Quran mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the human beings does science agree with it and Quran says in several places including the last verse of the embryological stages that is surah mu'minun chapter 23 verse number 14 that allah is the best to create can we prove it scientifically that allah is the creator quran gives the answer quran gives the answer in surah tur chapter 52 verse number 35 it poses a question that were you created from nothing See the Arabic word used for creator in all the verses of the Quran is khalik is derived from the Arabic word khalaqa 
Arabic word khalaka has got four meanings. One meaning is to create something from nothing without any previous example. That's only possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second meaning of khalaka is to create something new from pre-existing material. The third meaning is of khalaka, programming or planning. And the last meaning is to make smooth. So Quran poses a question in Surah Tur, chapter 52, verse 35, that were you created from nothing? But naturally the answer is negative, no. Human beings aren't created from nothing. They pose the next question. Were you the creators or we the creators? We know very well that man cannot create another man. If he could do that, then the moment he died, he would have created himself back. If his relatives would have died, he would have brought them back to life. Human beings can't even create a living creature such as fly, live outside human being. Neither can you attribute the organs of the body, say the reproductive organs, like testes or ovaries, that they are the cause for a creation. Because if you say that the testes, the uterus, etc. are the cause, then you have to include your ancestors, their reproductive system, their ancestors, their ancestors, all are responsible. So the answer is negative. Quran poses the next question in Surah Waqiyah, chapter 56, verse number 58 and 59, that do you not look at the sperm you have emitted? Were you the creator or we the creator? And but natural, all these questions that Quran poses, the answer is negative. Some people can say it's by chance. By chance we were created. They say nature, nature, natural thing. It happened by chance. Let's analyze scientifically whether the human beings can be created by chance. The protein molecule is a very important structure of the living cell. Very important part in the living structure of the cell. The protein molecule consists of five elements. The carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and sulfur. And there are tens and thousands of atoms required to make one molecule. One atom has five elements. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and sulfur. There are tens of thousands of atoms which make one protein molecule. And there are approximately 92 free elements. The chances that out of these 92, the five will form an atom. And these atoms will form tens and thousands of atoms to form one protein molecule was calculated by Frank Alien. And he said the chances are 1 in 10 raised to 160. You know what is the meaning of 1 in 10 raised to 160? If I say 1 in 10 raised to 2, 10 raised to 2 means 1 zero zero, 2 zeros. 1 in 100. Chances 1 percent. If I say 1 in 10 raised to 3, it means 1 in 1000. That's 0.1 percent. If I say 1 in 10 raised to 4, it means 1 in 10,000 means 0.01%. So when the calculation was made, 1 in 10 raised to 160, it means 0.00000, 157 zero, then 1. And mathematics tells anything 1 in raised to 10 raised to 50, it's counted as 0. Furthermore, this is talking about one molecule and the substance required to form this one molecule of protein was calculated by another person, Charles Guy. That it will require millions of times of substance as huge as our galaxies. Millions of galaxies will require to form this one molecule of protein. And the time was calculated by Charles Guy. The time taken for one protein molecule to be formed will be 10 raised to 263 years. You know what is that? One zero 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 two hundred sixty three zeros. It will take to form one protein molecule. And do you know there are how many protein molecules in one cell? And do you know how many other molecules are there in the cell? And how many cells are there in the human being? There are more than six billion molecules when a child is born. That's what doctors tell us today. Six billion. One more protein molecule. Takes 1 in 10 raised to 160 chances. Time taken is 10 raised to 263 years. 
to take six billion for one baby. Imagine, and how many women are pregnant? There are millions of women pregnant at a time, and it takes only nine months. The chances, science tells us, is zero, zero, zero. No chance at all. These things cannot take by chance. They have to be programmed by someone. Science tells us there has to be someone, some supernatural force. Therefore, science, as I said earlier, is not eliminating God. It is eliminating models of God. La ilaha illa.